What was that? <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Oh my God, that is awesome. <laughs> What's wrong, Steve? <laughs> Nothing, it's COVID. <laughs> Wait, can you zoom out? I can't tell if you're a hot dog or an, uh, a. No, that uh, certainly looks like a hot dog. Okay, it does. For a second, I thought it was uh, uh, um, uh, crab claws or uh, lobster claws. <laughs> nah, this is relish here. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I mean, to be fair, you did say Halloween. I did, and I felt lame. I was, I was, I wound up having here, a run around do something at lunch, and I had a, a grandiose yeah. ideas of what I was going to do, and I, and I completely forgot. I'll bring out my basket of finger puppets for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, Amy, you thank you for... Oh, you are awesome. There's a, a shark that comes by and like gets to tell stories about things. There's a, a Chinese dragon. <laughs> um, let's see, I've got some hedgehogs. Hi! <laughs> also, I'm joined in at the Volcano Project and I gotta fix that, but you know. Uh, I, I feel like I need to run to the to Costco for a hot dog. I, I <laughs> confirmed. Uh, all right. I'm this was in the uh, the children's section in Target about three years ago, so 1999. I'd like to remind you that 1980 was in fact 40 years ago. Because I'm a bad person. Not being nice. Don't know. be nice. <laughs> Why would you say something like that? Exactly. Because it's, it's true. Just... Uh, All right, there, I fixed my name properly. And uh, yeah, I think the shark. The shark is really like, you know, it's a good fit for the day. Steve, I know we have an actual agenda today. Um, we're only two minutes <laughs> that, that was good the enough. I, I am totally good with that. <laughs> oh, all right. Yep, this is all we need today. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. in a pumpkin house. There's, there's my attempt. I, I guess I could do something better, like find a grill, but that would that actually is a good thing for me. Maybe I don't need to do that. I'm not trying to grill Josh. <laughs> hey, Adam, you've joined uh, the Halloween version, which is just blowing off steam because all we live, <laughs> all we get to do is Zoom anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hello. I don't have. I have to look away for a second because it's just too great. <laughs> Steve, you, you call it a Halloween meeting and then... I know. Show up a... I know. It's, just, it's been one of those days, so I guess I just, it's uh, the stress relief that's coming out. So. All right. Um, I, I don't have the agenda either, anyway, so I'll just mute my mic and let Josh go off. <laughs> Josh, to you. All right. So, is my screen share visible? Yes, and you are sharing all, all of us back at each other again. Well done. Oh, okay. Sorry. How about now? <laughs> I mean, it's good. Okay, it's good. Now you're actually good. All right. So, um, Peter and I have been spending some time trying to uh, clean up um, the spec, the distribution spec based on what's in the RC2 milestone. So, in GitHub, there's a there's like a milestone that the maintainers have been throwing issues into relating to um, issues that were found in RC1, or some of them are have been open since 2018. But um, there's just a few that I wanted to talk about with everybody um, that were kind of, some of them we're not sure about or just wanted to check on uh, how people feel about it. So I'll just go through these one by one. There's one, two, three, four, six, six different things. So I don't want to spend too much time on one topic, but um, so the first one uh, is Mike Brown. Um, note regarding process section that is being removed from the specification text. So um, I was hoping he'd be here to kind of explain what he thought needs to happen, but a lot of this has to do with like the actual spec has a use cases section um, that seems a little bit uh, outdated or maybe not fully comprehensive. 
And I'm just trying to understand what was meant by some of this stuff. Um, I but guess a lot of it just hasn't been maintained. There's a lot of history that nobody had interest yeah. in maintaining it. I, I think there is value in having use cases, but how do we feel about instead of like these four, um, just more of like a bullet list that has things similar to this, like image, immutable image references, instead of some of these things which talk about signatures and, and things that are kind of um, dated. I'm thinking more a bullet list of 10 to 15 use cases. Does that? It's worth a PR to try. Okay. There is the beauty of a PR, right? And if uh, Mike, if you're watching this later, um, hey, let us know what you think. All right. Um, this one is from Ram, and this is regarding basically uh, in an effort to make people more conformant or to be a little bit more um, lenient on what it means to be conformant. What we've done is, so we broke everything down into categories. So you have full push, discovery and management. And um, there were some discussions and I think uh, Derek made, uh, maybe were, was the one to make a suggestion like this that um, it's really, pool is what is the really universal thing about a registry and you, if you read this through this issue, there's some conversation between me and Ram. Um, and my last comment was uh, regarding um, like having a common API, uh, think about something like Kubernetes where you're, I mean, you can obviously use Kubernetes to publish images, don't get me wrong, but um, in a general usage of a Kubernetes system, you're going to be downloading images from registries, and you don't really care about these three other scenarios. So I'm wondering, does anybody uh, kind of agree with what Ram is saying here that um, push or the other two should be not marked optional? I I really struggle with this one. I, I there is I, is this because we're trying to make sure that all registries can show green without doing additional work, or does anybody see that? There is a, like, how do you get content into a registry? Whether it's locked down to a back end like MCR, right? Nobody else can push to MCR, but of course we support push. Um, and the same thing with content discovery and content management. But I, I think this is like, we're not gonna actually set a bar so people can just do whatever they want. I think if we want to have experiences like the Helm CLI, which has been in the active conversation today, at least the circle I'm in, um, or ORAS or any of the other things, the whole goal here is we're trying to create a stable ecosystem so developers, project owners, you know, uh, the community can build a set of tools that they know just work. And if a registry doesn't want to be green for one of those, then that's their choice. That's okay. Well, I, I think there's a difference between whether a registry supports it or whether a use case in the implementation of it is just say one of them. I could, you know, so for poll, I could imagine a read-only uh, registry for people to be able to pull uh, content down, but because it's public, they don't want to be able to have uh, push access to that for say more private images. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's exactly the MCR scenario. Like, we don't let anybody outside of Microsoft push. In fact, even Microsoft employees can't push. There's a gated workflow, but the registry itself supports push. But I'm also not looking to have MCR show up on some conformance test that customers are going to use, that it matters. And like, if you, and I'll just pick on Harbor for a second. You know, if Harbor, you know, is being a pull through cache, if you will, or, you know, I'm trying to think of the, I'm trying to tie it to the Kubernetes thing. Maybe I'm just reaching here. It makes sense that it's set up for poll, but how'd you get the content in? And if you don't want to be conformant, that is a choice. But I think if we make everything optional, then what does being conformant actually mean? Does it, does it have any value? 
Hey guys. So it, it has value on the client side, right? So there's, there's a couple of scopes for these APIs, right? If you want to have some common code for pushing, you know, images in a, in a standard way across a plethora of registries so that you can actually, you know, spread out the pain, right, of where the, the content is stored and being, you know, being pulled from, then it would, be, it would be nice if there was some common way to do that. And certainly the, the reason we were publishing the Docker API was to allow that, that to happen, right? Um, it also gives you the ability to, to say, hey, you know, please don't change because you'll break my clients, right? And by the way, those clients are cloud solutions that have been deployed, right? So there, 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 there's a couple of cases to why, why you don't want the changes to occur or why you want there to be some you know, clear, understandable, you know, standard for pushing and pulling content for querying, right? Discovering and management, right? It, it's not just on the registry side. It's also the client. Put that a slightly different way. As a user, it is absolutely useful for me to know that MCR is OCI compliant for pulling. That's right. My, my OCI images will work. It, it will, won't get broken because I, I used the wrong, a tag that wasn't supported, right? But take, so th these are great points. So the, the thing is, is that the content discovery, we want that to be compliant. We will be compliant with that. The content management and push, they are supported. It's just, you don't get credentials to it. Like the APIs are there. We do support them. Um, so it is completely compliant. It's just, there's a permission that we just didn't, we don't give people access to. So I'm not, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, is, well, yeah, okay. Well, that's that's fair, right? Um, so you're, you're saying you, you have a limited, you know, support structure for certain types of clients. So what, what you're saying I'm really worried about. If the uh, go ahead, industry Chad. implementation is compliant, whether the deployment allows you to do all of these things is different. That right. That's like an access requirement thing, an ACL that you know it's up. Yeah, that's different. We should be able to test if you had a service. You know, you have a service model, right? Or I'm sorry, a service uh, account with MCR, whether it would work correctly or not. And then you could just scope it to, you know, for properly, right, you know, hosted, in, you know, clients where they have access. Yeah, it works just fine. Yeah, and MCR is an interesting one because like, we're not going to uh, put it up on the conformance test because it's just, it's a, it's a consumption point. The thing that I'm worried about is, and, and we don't do this in ACR, so I'm going to- And, and Docker has the same thing, by the way, Steve, on the push, right? You can't, you can't push to a domain that you don't have access to. Right. Well, well but to be fair, they could test it because you just create a dom an org and then you can push to it. So there is a way to good test that. And I would hope that they would meet these bars. The thing that I'm worried about and is let's say that an ACR because of auth, and this isn't true. So I am in fictitious lands, true. Yeah, that's fair. Put me under the bus where I don't want to call out another cloud. I'm not even sure if it's true for another cloud. I don't want to tell customers that, yeah, of course ACR supports push, but you have to use the AZ CLI to do that because of excuse one, two, and three. What I want to be able to help be held accountable is ACR supports push because we follow the OCI conformance spec. Um, and it's that simple. I don't want to make, I want to make sure that we and all other registries are held compatible, that they can't say we're OCI conformant, but, but that's optional. So in order for you to push, you have to use this other CLI. That would be a broken scenario. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to suggest, what if we remove optional, the wording from the spec, and instead in the conformance what, what's wrong, Steve? Um, in the conformance uh, repo, we talk about the breakdown in terms of your repo can be, or your registry can be conformant on four levels. So the spec, the spec is as it's written, talk, assumes that everything is required, but as far as conformance goes, you can conform like all the way conform or 
some of the way from form. Right. It brings value to your four, your, your traffic light, the four rows, the traffic lights. Like I want to keep, I want to keep it optional. Um, but if implemented, then, you know, you can't say it's OCI push unless it's OCI push, right? So okay. Mike, you Mike you're saying do nothing. Well, yeah, I, I guess I, I might have missed the part where why, why would you want it to be, you know, mandatory that you include push where when pull is the minimal requirement and you can push any way you want yeah, outside, right? But if you do do push, here's, here's the specification, right? It's just not mandatory, um, you know, when a pull is all you wanted, I guess is the way to explain it. But why couldn't you say if you want to be compliant with the spec, you must support? Like, how do you get content into a registry if you don't support push? Uh, well, I mean, there's any number of ways, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> sure, there's a physical ways. But my point is, is do we really want to say that there is, if you want to be compatible with the spec, that you have to support push? Now, to Josh's point, I don't, I don't the performance think so. tests, we yeah. could say, look. You don't have green on that one. You're green on the other one. You're green on pull. Great. That's all you want to be. Like, I am fine if MCR, if we even never submitted it to the, the conformance test, and I'm just I'm making a hypothetical here. Yeah. If we ever submitted it, I'd be totally fine that MCR only shows green on, on pull and catalog discovery. Uh, right. Content. Yeah, catalog discovery. Because uh, the others are just, they're not supported scenarios. We are implementation of the spec, but we don't expect anybody else to, to use it in that way. And except our internal teams, like I would make sure our internal teams don't have to have special tooling. Yeah, I mean, other, other than the requirement for dynamic testing of the registry, why would push be a requirement if all you wanted to support to customers was pull? I think that's the argument for saying, well, pull is, a man, is the only one that's mandatory. Right. Um, the other part of it, being a is, you know, it's a subtle argument I'm trying to make is that if, if you say you want to support the distribution API, right, the OCI, OCI standard for distribution, and you're doing and you're supporting push from the client, right, then I think you have to support it at least this way, right, you can have additional APIs for push, other ways to push, but you can't say you support OCI distribution push unless you support it the way it's specified at a minimum, right? I, I guess I'm trying to say that that's what the conformance test could cover. That to be- Right, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So then in that case, the spec isn't optional. It's just you, did, you chose not to conform to the spec. You chose not to implement the push if you don't, yeah. Are we saying the same? Well, what I'm saying is it's not optional. It is required. But you, it doesn't mean you have to do it. That just means that you're not fully conformant. And that's okay. You're, you're talking about pull or push. I'm sorry. And push. So I'm, I'm, I think we're, I'm, I'm going on the ones we, we agree to dis, uh, are disagreeing on. We all agree that pull is there. I, but I, I, I'm just trying to make the point that if you want a spec for core capability, that I don't know what a registry means if you don't support Oh, yeah, well, you brought that's a new term, right? What does core capability mean? Shit, I was trying to end, but not open up new topics. <laughs> well, but but that's the, that is, I think, subtly the point you're making is that if you consider core to include pull and push and discovery and management, then. Yeah, I was thinking that like that's the other level that, of support, um, right? Sorry. I was thinking the other ones that Vincent's been you know, talking about is the, this other API. So for signature management. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I imagine yeah. that's going to be optional for a while until we get you know that better. So maybe some future spec either make it required core, or there'll be some optional features. I don't know what a what point of what a purpose of a registry is if you can't push, pull, discover, and manage. The is distribution. The, the the point of it would be distribution. And what's the point of MCR if I can't push to it? <clears throat> You can't because you don't have state. authorization. You can put people can push to it. I just I can't. Give you the keys. I can't push to it. So what's I, the point? I didn't give you the keys. Get rid of it. <laughs> or give me the keys. I'm okay with that too. <laughs> but, but that's basically arguing the difference between a public registry and a you know and a private one, right? I well, think it's, our, sorry, go ahead, Tiana. 
I think it's still useful to be able to say that this read only registry is OCI compliant and that still has meaning even though you can't push to it. Right. Right. Yeah, so and you could qualify that right here in the specification. We could just say, you know, pull is mandatory, mandatory for read only, right? Um, or others, right? Or always. And then on push, we can say optional for read only registries, right? How do we word it in such a way that somebody doesn't justify that the way they support pushes through their custom experience and now all the tooling that is- uh, Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> well, I, but I don't want to lock them out, right? We're a standards group. We're not an enforcement group. We're not trying to stop anybody from coming up with a better push API. All we're saying is that the, you know, the, the, the old Docker distribution API supports push this way. And we're, we've analyzed it. And we think that if you want to support the, the current specification, you know, our specification for, you know, push, here is how you do it. Right. And it's supported with everybody who says they support push the OCI way. Right. But that doesn't say somebody else can't come up with the push prime. Right. We're not, we're not, we're not enforcing, we're not trying to stop or slow down the, the you know, right. the, you said coming up with better push. You're, you're saying standards. What is the minimum standard? For, for, o, for OCI for the distribution spec. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to figure out how to make it at least somewhat useful. If you can't push and you want to just be a pull through cache, as somebody said, you still got to get the content into it. I, I think that's already like, enforced by by user behavior right if if i have a container registry and i can't use docker push to push into it i'm not going to choose that container registry it's useless to me right right so therefore because i don't have any client the standard that's what i'm trying to say is if right so it'll, it'll have a nice big red x on whether it supports push and i think that's enough if they say we're oci compliant and the OCI says, no, you got a big red X on push, but they do support dynamic loading of images. That's that's a head scratching moment for users, right? Because the <laughs> vendor is saying one thing, but the OCI is saying, no, you're not. Well, but if they support OCI images, they, you know, that that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing. You, sure. Saying you support OCI doesn't necessarily mean all of the OCI specifications, right? You might you might do your own runtime and not need run C, right? Or the runtime spec. Yeah, absolutely. But it's all it's still useful to users to know that it it supports the OCI distribution spec poll, but doesn't right. support the OCI distribution spec push. I think that's a very useful piece of information for our customers. Which, in that which is why we split out the conformance test, right? That's why yes. Josh and Co. Yes. did all that hard work. Yes, exactly. Good. But an X on an optional should be okay. An X on a mandatory is a problem. Right. That's why I'm trying to avoid putting a red X. I really hadn't thought about it too much, but a red X on the push. I, I'd rather that just be, you know, if you're, a, you know, a subdivided portion right, of the spec. So what does that mean? Like the, the idea, so if we went this theory, because honestly, I forgot about the optional declarations. If it's optional, why do I have a red X as opposed to it's gray? I didn't declare I'm supporting, so I'm not really red. Yeah, red is a bad color. <laughs> well, it's a bad color, but it's an intentional. It's the wall of shame. It's our, our hot dog. The wall of shame is bad. It, it, it should probably, for anything that's optional, I would, I would argue yellow or if you use my last name, brown would be fine, right? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna awesome. stop. Could, I just realized that he's probably got this outfit on because he's trying to control his hair. That doesn't. I, I'm going to uh, put a limit. I, I think we should move on because now we're just talking about colors. So, to be clear, we're talking about three words in the spec. So, if somebody, Steve or Mike um, or Tianan, if you have a idea that would clarify what we're talking about here, um, yeah. By yeah, all I'll, means. Push, I'll push something to clarify it. No problem. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're, we're talking about three, uh, three words. Um, lead them. It's fine. Well, but they're in, they're in all caps. <laughs> <laughs>
So yeah, so I understand what we're Steve's point of view there, right? It's because they're on all caps. We've got to clarify it better. I, okay. I think can I just say I think with regard to conformance, the question we need to answer is who is conformance for and like who's who's gonna want to be conformant and, and why? Because I like if you look at Kubernetes conformance, I mean that's not tied to a spec, it's tied entirely to their conformance tests, but the reason you become Kubernetes conformant is so that you can put the Kubernetes conformant logo on your product. And I, I can see there being a potential future where that's true for OCI as well. And then the question is, what are those products and, and who are the customers for them and what do they care about, right? So I think that's the thing to answer when it, when yeah, it comes time yeah. to do the conformance program, right? Right. And funny you mentioned that, right? Because this would be a part of that in, in some respects. Because if you don't have a conformant OCI, you're going to have a hard time running OCI pods you know, or OCI containers in pods. In conformance tests, once we move the OCI tests into the conformance tests, which is certainly our, you know, one of our goals. So, yeah. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. Maybe if we have time, we can, we can talk more on that. Um, can you see this? Uh, is it switching tabs in the screen share? Do you see uh, number 200? I'd say friendly read me 200. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so this is just regarding how um, the current, basically the current spec, if you look at it, has kind of, it's a little bit empty, uh, especially compared to if you, for example, go to image spec. So this one is just about making this a little bit cleaner um, or friendly. So do people have any issue with me basically following what image spec has done um, as far as the, the layout they have here? I mean, if the question is, if you have a heading with no content, then why do you have a heading? Then we should delete the heading or fill in the content. I, I, I think. It, if you're going to release the spec, it needs to be one or the other, not in the middle. Uh, yes, I guess I'm. I guess I'm. I guess I'm fishing for suggestions to make the README more inviting. But yeah, I mean, we do have headings, these which I think are. Yeah, <laughs> following sections give context, and then there's no context. So. <laughs> Should, should those have elaborations in terms of what the what we meant by those? Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe that's the answer, uh, and that's enough. But I mean, if you look at, I uh, should have done another tab here. Yeah, I if you look here, it needs. I, I think the, okay. there was some good conversations that were discussed around like, hey, should we maybe have some docs in here that's you know pointers to articles? I think the reader doesn't have to be blank, but it. it it could have some stuff like, here's how you use the registry. Here is what it's intended for. If you're trying to contribute, here's the things to do. But um, I think there's some headings in there. Okay. Great intentions okay. that have no more value. All right, um, simple enough. Uh, by the way, there, uh, speaking of FAQ, there's uh, um, Vanessa Sochat opened a, or was it merged? There is actually an, an open PR here, number 189. And she actually implemented a registry in Python. And in doing so, came up with all of these kind of uh, Q&As, which, so this is PR to be into the readme, but it's pretty long um, and wondering if that should be in an FAQ MD, but um, just wanted to make people aware of this. All right. Um, cool. Okay, this is a really interesting one. Uh, this came up like two days ago. So, um, for chunked uploads, you send pieces of a blob, um, and the way that you send the pieces is you use a this is not very, I should open up this RFC. Um, the way you send pieces is you use a header called content range. 
And currently, um, in the conformance tests, we're using content range, byte number, or index of byte to end index. Um, and I forget if it's inclusive or not, but um, this person made a PR to, because the actual RFC 73, uh, 7233 says you need to actually use the, um, the, the actual like figure if you're using bytes or kilobytes or whatever. And we have yet to test this against like Docker distribution or Zot or something. So I'm very weary that this may not work against distribution. Does anybody have any background on this? We have to go look through the code to see if it's Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I was just going to pull in the PR and run it against it and see if it breaks or not. But um, it, it may require a, you know, a service update on HTTP support, right? I'll have to go look. Well, I, I guess I guess where I'm kind of going with this is, are we OK not conforming to RFC 7233 if distribution doesn't support it? Because that's going to turn all the registries red. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not only does it turn all the registries red, right, does it change all the clients too? Like I Exactly. Don't... I don't think it's worth it to actually conform to this RFC. If, if it... anything, I think in a 1.1 1 .1 or something, we say, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to do with this one. Like I don't, I'm, I'm asking very generalized questions. Are they even compatible? If it does work, does it downward, you know, does the other one, line 249, Ready. It's going to require testing to find out, probably. But I'm looking at. I mean, maybe the conformance test dude, the conformance test hot dog can run a quick test and give a sounding test. If it fails, then we know what the answer is. If it passes, then we just need to know more, test more. Um, looking at. I will. Go ahead. Looking at the distribution code, I don't think it supports content range at all. So, um, <laughs> I think I might. Uh, I. It might be an underlying library. It, it's hard for me to believe. And it could also be that maybe bytes is assumed um, in whatever Go library. I'll look into this. I just want to know if anyone can move back on. Um, OK, this was a big uh, PR that uh, Peter worked on. So um, basically, we. Uh, either through accident or miscommunication, completely left blob mounting out of the spec when it was rewritten. And so what this PR number 204 um, is, is basically putting that back and also adding a test um, to test mounting a blob from another registry. Uh, and we're also saying or I'm sorry, another uh, repo in the same registry. Okay. Um, however, we are saying that this will basically, um, that a 405 or like method not allowed will be accepted if you don't want to support this. Um, and it also introduces a new environment variable that you need to use, which is the other namespace for the repo that will have the cross mount. So um, I don't think that this, uh, Peter, I don't know if you're on it. I don't think that this is going to be required as a variable. But um, if you want to use it, then you need to specify that. Um, is this optional or required? I'm, I'm being somewhat facetious. No, I, I don't think it is required. It's not required to support. But it will be tested if it will be. Uh, well, let's just let's just look at what it. What does it mean? Yeah, the, way, the way that it's set up now is uh, if it's disabled, you'll get a status uh, not allowed. Uh, that's method not allowed. That's 405. Um, otherwise, it expects it to be created. Uh, in, the, in that case, it is supported. And then there are additional checks to make sure that the blob was in fact mounted. If I don't support this feature, do I get green or red? Uh, if you don't support it, 
you have to return a 405, um, in which case you'll get green. If you do support it, you have to pass one additional check and you can get green. So I, as a consumer, trying to see if this, this registry foo supports, is, you know, is in good standing and has all the features I want to, I don't even know about cross mounting. I'm just trying to get it. It shows green across the board. So, but now later on, after I bought it, stood it up, had a bunch of teams start using it, turns out it doesn't have that feature. How did I, how, how would I have known that up front? And I didn't go down that whole path. Yeah, I'm just not, I, I just don't know if it's worth making a fifth category for, you know, if we're talking about it like that. Maybe. I don't know who um, what registries don't support it, to be fair. Maybe this is a no brainer. And it's just a matter of, but it's the fact that you were starting to say like, hey, it doesn't have to be enabled. I, there's, I'm there's thrilled to have to start over again, but if we have to, we'll do it. Um, there's, there's one other relevant issue or comment that uh, Derek made on the PR, um, which is that uh, in the case of a registry not supporting it, it can default to, instead of returning a 201 created, it returns a 202. And that same post request acts as though, you know, that query parameter wasn't supplied for the cross mount and it was just a request to open the session and get the session ID. Um, so, you know, I just made a judgment call with the 405 system. I'm, I'm not married to that, you know, that's just what I went with. And, you know, you're, you're welcome to make comments on the PR and I'm happy to change it. I, I don't have a strong opinion on this personally. Um, and if anyone else wants to weigh in, that'd be helpful too. But you make, you make good points. There are a few other conversation of either the spec is a meaningful spec. And if you support the spec, then I, then I know you support it and I can use it. And I want to know which registries don't support it. And maybe it's okay that they don't support feature X, Y, and Z and I'll still use it. But So the actual, this is a little bit convoluted, but if we actually go to the conformance results, um, let's see an example here. I think. I'm not sure if we have a good example, but if you go to the reports, um, like the actual section will be gray if it's skipped. So technically you could go into a report and see that cross mount is being skipped. So there is a way to determine it's not it's not very it's not as clear as having you know so i could just say everything that's option I, I could find a way to minimally get green yeah hope. like it would show up green here but then if you actually looked in and be like oh do they support this specific api endpoint and you would see the gray for cross mount so i, I don't know it, it's it's how granular do we want to be you know here, a suggestion is this, I, and I actually don't know about this feature just to know how many registries do or don't support it. If all registries support it, can we make it just, and if there's a certain registry that doesn't ask them, hey, is there some good reason why you don't want to support it? I think we shouldn't. I, I just, I want to be, I, I think the spec has to have some value. I, well, no, I, I think that's part of the reason why we, I think, left it out originally is we're just like, we didn't really see where it was being used. And I think it was, uh, John Johnson, who pointed out, like, hey, like, this is a big thing. No, it's a huge uh, thing. We do so... it to save space um, okay. and a registry. Like, you know, the Ubuntu layers are not, you know, duplicated in every repo. Yeah, right. So I don't know anybody um, who doesn't do this. And um, there's, a, <laughs> okay. there's, a, there's an idea that you don't, sh there's a question whether you share layers between registries on the same platform. And there's a security argument about that one way or the other, um, but that's not the ask. That that's a total cloud optimization that you know teams registry should expose or not whatever however they want to share that. But I I would think that I is especially especially as the Docker terms of service is highlighting that running registries is expensive. Um, I think. I would imagine all registries at some point are going to charge, I don't know who doesn't, charge customers for storage. 
I'm going to want to know that this registry doesn't support cross mounting and they're going to be charging me more than registry two. So I'm going to choose registry two unless registry one that doesn't support cross mounting has got some super good value that I'm willing to pay a lot more for. Yeah, yeah. So I think, especially because we're already in the RC one phase, I um, I wish John was on this call, but to get that opinion. But like, I'm wondering if this is something we leave out of the spec, and it's still like other registries until like a new like a one dot one. Just because it's so close, like it's so close to the conformance tests haven't been touched for a while, and this is a new thing. That most of the conformance tests are red, so people are working to fix them anyway. So why don't we like, there's only with make, a, make them more red? Well, they're already red, they're already working to fix them. Let's just give them while they're fixing them, throw this because I, I, I really think that most registries support this. We've got a couple of people here. Anybody... Another way to look at this is maybe we look at the behavior of Docker. Docker push does cross blob mounts if it knows that the layer that it's supposed to push already exists in another repository on the same registry. So we should check whether or not that behavior is unconditional or whether it actually checks whether the registry supports a cross blob mount. Does it assume the registry does? And if it does, then I doubt there's a registry out there that doesn't support it. Buddha? So I, um, I think the code is well, put it in and let's see what happens. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I if, kinda, it yeah. case, uh, if it is the case that everybody is doing this and and nobody can readily think of a counterexample, then sure, it, it makes sense to have it in the spec. Um, and it looks like the the same default behavior um, is that um, the session is opened in the case that perhaps the blob doesn't exist or that for whatever reason it, it isn't supported. Um, so I, I think that makes sense. Um, does, does it, and it seems like most people are in agreement. So if, if there's no further disagreement about this, then I, I propose that we just go ahead and, you know, make it the case that this is required. Does anyone strongly object to that? I'm here. I'm hearing no. I, I so maybe we just remove that 405 check. And, yeah, um, I think I think that's where we go. And then um, if there needs to be further discussion about the 201 versus 202, or, you know, whether or not this should be done, uh, you know, what should be done automatically, if there's a, a failure of some kind, then we can kick that discussion down the road. But as far as including it in the spec, it, it seems like everyone wants it. So let's put it in. I think it's also something that customers are going to want, a user is going to want to know that a registry supports, and it's a kind of a hidden feature that is going to be have an impact on them because of the cost factor. The cost factor is either they're paying their registry to store it or their local disk because they're running something like Harbor where they don't pay per storage, but they, they're paying for the storage that's the disk that's supporting something like Harbor. So I think it's an important thing to surface out. All right, um, cool. Moving on. So uh, we have a, um, there's a milestone. Okay, so let me take a step back. If you go to the, well, now I don't know how to find it. Um, here we go. So there's a RC uh, uh, 10 RC2 milestone. So Peter and I looked at this and tried to um, close duplicates and kind of come up with a plan to address all of these. Um, it looks like a lot, but a lot of them are like, hey, change this one word. Uh, number 68 has been open for a long time and uh, I'm not sure where we stand with that. Um, but basically, uh, all of the, like this, this one change will close all of these, or not all of the ones in here, but the ones that, with the exception of these 
five that we uh, are kind of unsure on. So um, take a look at this, but um, like Steve, it has your change regarding being more agnostic about content types. And um, there was something about the, the Docker specific headers and we're just putting under historical context that, hey, uh, some clients may request or send these or uh, require these headers, but they're optional. Um, and other kind of just tiny uh, things related to that, um, how to run conformance tests, where to go to certify the actual, the actual regular expression for um, repo names. And then this is the cross flop stuff because it's built on that other PR. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is like really the last big text update to spec, um, at least uh, in our opinion. So um, I guess please take a look at that. And that's that's really everything I had to uh, I had to bring up today. <laughs> I had a quick question if uh, we're open for that. Say that again? I had a quick question if we're open for questions at this point. I have nothing else to discuss, so. Okay. Uh, as, it, as I was, as we were going through the uh, public content and the rate limiting from Docker, I looked at their documentation. It said that the head request uh, wasn't counted against the, the, the rate limiting. However, when I look at our spec, that I don't see any head uh, uh, endpoints uh, defined, and I was wondering if that was intentional or uh, if those are something that would need or want to be put into the specification. Um, let me let me look here. Um, when you say head requests. You're talking about the manifest requests. Is that what you're? Yeah. Uh, both hand, uh, manifest and blob to be able to to uh, indicate whether they exist in the remote registry. And what's the spirit of your question that the TOS refers to something we don't call in the spec? I'm trying to. Well, I, I'm wondering whether there would need to be something similar to be able to, if clients are written to be able to to do a head ahead of pulling the actual manifest, but OCI, the OCI spec doesn't define a head. As, as a concrete example, container D always does a head first. And I don't know if it falls back to a get. I haven't looked at the code, but I know that it starts with a head. Maybe Phil could chime in or Mike. I didn't know if it was intentional or a an omission. It's just so the so the endpoints in that table were based on every API call from the conformance test. So it's nothing to do with what Docker or anything is doing. Um, so I think if we were to, we should add these, we should add a head check in the tests and then just add it to the table. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, I don't know. I and, wasn't aware of that. And then define what the return value should be. Yeah, right. I would say it's, it's more of an omission. Um, it's just something that inadvertently, I think, was left out. We were kind of more focused on the workflows. And um, as far as like writing the tests, it was kind of like, I, I think we just kind of overlooked it in favor of getting the the big picture in place. So um, it's something to look into. For, yeah, for I think we could include it in pool pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. And it, it seems like there's a very real use case there. So, and it wouldn't be too much trouble to add anyway. So, so uh, thank you. Yeah, just something that I happened to notice and thought I'd ask this team since there was a call. Mark, was there an issue on this or were no. you just bringing it up right now? No, I, I just thought I'd ask here first to see if there was any basis. Yeah, for I, I think I actually remember something coming in. So I'm going to search head. Um, 
No, just to answer the question Tianon asked a few minutes ago. Um, so container D does do a fallback to get, and it actually has a comment, support registries which have not properly emit, implemented the head method for manifest endpoint. So I assume this is without uh, pointing too many fingers, I assume this is Derek's code who probably also wrote the resolver for Docker back in the day. I threw a link in the chat to the Docker API spec that references head. It looks like it was updated at some point to reference head. It's listed in the change log. But, so probably makes sense to add a conformance test for that. <laughs> And Brian just added a comment in chat as well. And likely there should be an OCI content digest with an optional Docker content digest. I feel like there was a discussion on that a long time ago. Surely there's an issue somewhere in that. Um, so I just, with the, that link and, and that comment, I just added a new um, issue and I'm going to add it into that RC2 milestone. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, was there anything else like uh, missing from the first RC that people who had a chance to look um, felt needed to change? I want to read. I haven't had a chance to read through it, honestly. Yeah. So I want to. I, I can't wait. And so, I want to hold up, but I, just, I want. I do want to catch up. There, yeah, there was so one I, interesting topic, and I. We have a couple of minutes. I'm curious what people think about the regex for repos, and what. And I know I'm totally being random. I'll open up an issue. What do people think about having, a special repo that we can, project images into. Uh, project, yeah, project images or artifacts into a registry for a user, but it's like a system reserved namespace. It's, it, it indirectly falls into the caching model. Um, to be completely transparent, the, the thing is, is that we make, as customers put their registries into VNets, they don't want to be uh, to reach outside of their registry, uh, but we, in AKS support the AKS images, the Kubernetes images, but we tell them to go pull them from MCR. MCR is a public endpoint. They don't want to pull it from there. We've been experimenting with some ideas of projecting those images into the customer's registry, but where do we put them? There's no namespace we could put that we know would be empty. So now it has to be unique per, per registry. That's kind of weird. If there was this system namespace that underscore underscore I don't know something that it's just an idea and I'm just curious what this group thinks about it and I know it's totally random. Now what scope are you talking about, Steve? Are you talking about you know local node host type scopes or? I would love to be able to say that every ACR you, when you want to pull even the Ubuntu I'll, I'll go to an extreme but it's probably not a good example. Um, we want customers to be able to pull a set of images like the Ubuntu image, like the, AK, the images that are required to run on customer VMs to run AKS. They shouldn't have to go to MCR. They can, they can just pull them from their registry, but they shouldn't, they don't manage them. We manage them on behalf. So what I would like to do is project these special set of images into a customer's registry that a customer can't push to because they have a special character that blocks that is blocked on push, but it's a reserved namespace for the registry to provide content. So yeah, that, conceptually that somewhat similar to the well-known directory on web hosts that's used mm -hmm. for like let's encrypt Acme. I'm not familiar with the details, so I can't comment one or the other. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it was a library namespace, right? Like you, slash dot well dash known is, oh, okay. is a quote unquote well known directory path for servers. 
that can be used for things like Let's Encrypt. If you, if you want Let's Encrypt to do verification based on can I fetch a file over HTTP, that's the directory path where that file gets fetched from by the remote service. Or for um, verifying yourself on Google's silly webmaster tools thing, like you, there's a file that you place in that well-known directory that it okay. then fetches to see that you own that that domain or that host. Gotcha. Yeah, so it is that same kind of scenario. The problem is, how do I know of the millions of registries that people have across all of us today that well-known, that directory named well-known is not already used? So the thought process was, can we use one of the characters that's already reserved because it says it's not supported and just say, yeah, it's still not supported for everybody else except the registry itself so that we can help customers with a set of system images. I think client validation is probably going to be your biggest hurdle with that is that clients are validating those names separately from whether or not the registry will actually give it to them. Even on poll? Potentially. So you think even on poll, it might be one of the regex? Yeah, I would not be surprised at all to see poll just throwing things out. Like I can't Docker poll something with a space in it. Docker won't even try as far as I know. I can try. Oh, that's a fair point. That's a very fair point. Is, is there anything in the spec that precludes you from just choosing a path? Like, it, because it, it, the problem is, how do I choose a path that a customer three. might not have used? Sure. I mean, for your like existing customers, there's a migration problem, right. but for new customers, like, you're always allowed to return. No, you're not allowed to push to that because that's sure. totally up to the registry. No, totally. It's unfortunately we're successful so, and we all have a lot of registries already. <laughs> we have, have a lot of customers we don't want to penalize. Steve, does the Azure uh, account system have a minimum character limit on their account names? What is account? You're actually using host names, right? As a, you're actually yeah, using we use the DNS your own host name. Yeah, we actually do have a minimum of four characters, I think. Okay. Because like what we, it's not the it's not the namespace that's in the registry. So what we did with Bundlebar, and we just have the one domain, is we just used the character U before the username, and that's so we left it open so that if we want to do system stuff, we can take over anything that is it doesn't start with U. Yeah. U slash. But you own the registry. Nobody can push. Wait, can anybody? How do you? At, you can't push, you can only push to stuff under you slash. So we could make, if we wanted to host Helm charts or something, we could have Helm slash, right. uh, you know, so that we, we had thought about that as like, we don't want people to squat on these system or like official. Yeah. I'll open an issue just for tracking. I just, when you brought up the regex, it reminded me of it. So I was just, I figured I'd throw it out there for people to, to throw. I do, I do think this, like, that sounds like a feature tack on that wouldn't prevent a 1.0 though, as the specs written. It'd basically be a relaxation of the regex for, but it, it, uh, I didn't, I think it was Tianan mentioned the, the point. We have to check the clients. I haven't checked. The client is a great one. I, I assumed people check on push. I didn't even think that they might check on pull, but it makes perfect sense that. Invalid reference format. Oh, you tried? Right. Yeah, but well, that's with a space. Let me try with like a period. Oh, underscore. Yeah, still invalid reference format. All right. Okay. Never mind. Well, it looks like we're just at time. Yeah. Looks like we're just at time, so. <laughs> I, I have a timekeeping note as far as that goes. Um, do we want to be able to keep next week's dev call or um, push off towards the following week? Why do we want to call now? What's the reason? Recovery? Because next week is the fourth. Oh, that's right, it is. I, I did see some emails. That, yeah, sure. Let's either celebrate or, or, or pity ourselves and no opinion on which way that uh, In all honesty, you all seem to be having enough content to be able to do meetings bi-weekly. Not necessarily weekly, but you know. Yeah. Derek did have something for next week, but I don't, I don't remember it being time sensitive. So um, Docker has been working on some delete APIs that they're gonna ship quickly for the thing that we've been all watching. 
and I was asking him, hey, this sounds like a great conversation for us to have across all registries, but it doesn't have to be next week. So yeah, I, I'm all in vote for, for that. Anybody object? Nalini says yes. <laughs> I'm not hearing like resounding like, yes, I totally want to be able to keep a meeting for next week. Um, but it was one of those things where like the, for, for groups that I know are trying to meet like next week, kind of just a quick flag for, don't know, Sounds a good idea. Let's just let's some work out right now. <laughs> Josh, thank you. <laughs> Steve, you set me up for this. I did. I didn't mean to. I really did. But like, dude, you always deliver. So kudos to you. Thank you. Um, thank you, and thank everybody uh, for this great discussion. So we're gonna keep. Uh, chugging at this RC2 and um, and yeah, if we can get some help with the optional language and a review on the two open PRs, that would be great. And we'll track down that whole content range thing as well. We'll do, so, thanks. Thank Josh. you. Yep. Josh, thank I had you, to Mike. make sure you weren't hanging out completely alone. <laughs> awesome. Thank, thank you, Thank you for all, all right. All right, good to see all of you. <laughs> see you in two weeks. Bye. Oh yeah. Bye. Bye. The Darth Vader shows at the end. <laughs>